then the provinces being the states, then the campuses being the local communities. Right? That's all crucial, isn't it? And then the codes, the codes of law, and then the financial system. Now, that's a, that's a big undertaking because that, that basically is a complete model of a complete global system we're talking about. It's not, it's not 20 page, you know, aspirational, you know, we the people. It's, it's a complete model, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, that's what your cater is rolling out and it takes time. And, and sometimes you'll be swinging along saying my schedule's on time and then you hit something like the canons of administrative law and you start getting into administrative law and you realize, boy, there's a lot to be understood in this before you move forward because we're not here to mimic superficially. We're here to present the law in its most perfected knowledge, most perfected state. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing, Ron. We're consuming. I understand. But somehow they have to get weaker so we can get stronger. They are getting weaker, Ron. Yep. They are getting yep. weaker. Well, we just need more people poking at them, <laughs> you know? Well, th that, that'll happen too, but that will happen through the people on the call, the people that listen, and those that actually see the effect of what you're doing. I mean, a lot of people will go to one heaven, but how many have read the covenant end to end? How many? Not far less than, than those that have been on the site, yeah? Yep. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that makes you a bad person. I mean, you know, it's it's hard. I mean, you've got to live your life. You you come to it. Uh, it's it's heavy reading. It takes time. That's fine. But reading is really important, isn't it? I mean, how many people have actually read the canons, the first few books of canon law? They're up on the site. Do you think not a lot? A few, but not a lot. Maybe fifteen percent. Okay. So people have scanned. Look, everyone probably have scanned something in those, yep. but how many have read them from start to finish in the, in the order in which they've been written? As you say, only, only a, a portion. So it takes time. And that's fine. That's part of it. But when people are learning and they are committed to their, uh, their own knowledge, they're con committed to becoming comp competent, and they are committed to seeing the world become a better place and, and know that they have the power in their hands to do that, then over time, that will just get stronger and stronger and the people will be there. Not everyone's going to be ready for court. Some will go to court and make a, a hash of it. Some will go to court and won't. But it's already changed, Rob. It's already started to change and their power is slipping away day after day. Right. Oh, I wanted to commend you on the journey to UCA. What a beautiful book. Oh, thank you. It's, it's huge, but it's it's great. Good on you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Ron. All right. Great discussion there, uh, guys. That was, that was very good. All right. I'm going to... That leads me into another question and makes me skip a couple, but we can get back to the other one. Uh, regarding praying, if the mind works in symbols and pictures, wouldn't it be better to see what you want as opposed to vocalizing it? I, I think that's a good question, and, and um, we can hit again on right. uh, on the purpose of vocalizing. I think that's a great question. Um, this probably sounds like I'm cheating, but it's actually um, best to do both. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, let, let's take something that even Oprah, for example, uh, promoted, Oprah Winfrey, the idea of a, of a dream board where you put on a board the things that you aspire in your life. And now, of course, she was promoting, sadly, a, a largely materialistic view of things, but that is the symbolism. Now, having the board itself is important because that reminds you on a daily basis. It's a bit like having a postcard. You know, if, you, if you're thinking of a holiday, and people do this maybe without even consciously thinking about it, they'll dream of the, of the ideal holiday, say to Hawaii, and they'll get a postcard of Hawaii and they'll put that on their desk in their cubicle. 
And that, that, that'll be there, but it'll be a reminder every day. That's the whole idea. And if they manifest towards that, it helps. So I, I'm a great believer that is intent, which that's all about intent. Like, can I visualize what I'm asking is crucial. And I think I did mention it, but I didn't mention it maybe as clearly. Now it's a matter of manifesting it into this dream, into this realm. And that's where the vocalization comes in. So when you combine intent and action, then you have the most powerful combination. And that changes things. Intent and action changes the dream. So I think that's the key. Yeah? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Frank. Uh, next question. Is Acadia any uh, duration? Uh, the purpose of this question was it was debate, being debated earlier on Skype today, and uh, they wanted to have that clarified. Is Eucadia a... Is Eucadia or any part thereof or of Eucadia a corporation? No. A U- Eucadia Books is a company that I formed some years ago so that I could earn a living and pay for the bills and it's very expensive. I mean, there are websites, there's software, there's computers, and there's the time that has been used to build Ucadia Online. And so it was formed so I could do that. Part of stepping away at the end of the year is to free Ucadia and the model from any claim that anyone might like to say that it is a business venture. But Eucadia Books was formed, and I've never hidden the fact that I formed a business to survive. And in the process, I have sacrificed, well, 25 years of my life, and in the last 15 years, life and income to the point that I have nothing. I have no home. We rent and I have no real assets to speak of because all my money, all the money has been invested into Eucadia. But even so, with that, people will still find anything that they can and, and often people will, will look to the, the very cynical edge and they'll say, oh, well, Eucadia Books is there. The same as if Frank hangs around for longer than a year. A lot of, I get emails from people saying, please, Frank, don't go. You know, when you go, uh, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen potentially when, when I go is, is it'll take, there'll be a drop. There'll be a drop of activity until people step up and, and, and take it on themselves. But the benefit is no one from the end of the year onwards can say that Eucadia is anything other than a dream being instanced in action, that it is a collection that it is not for the benefit or the profit of one and that it has no corporate patronage. It's not set up. There's no, it's no shop front window for some secret sect. You know, it, it is, to all intents and purposes, the purest idea that could possibly be presented. So there is the honest, straightforward answer. Okay, so as people might be doing some research, they would run upon the... Yeah, or Eucadia books part uh, of what you've uh, put together in the in the past. And last week you did explain and um, um, give to everyone the meaning behind Eucadia as uh, where that term came from, uh, what's used as part of the uh, overall society of one heaven. Um, so basically, can you just then kind of mesh that in with where we're at with Eucadia as a society versus a corporation then? Sure. Well, UCA stands for Unique Collective Awareness. So UCA is a fancy way of saying the divine creator or the dreamer. So if the universe is a dream, then what do we call the universe? 
Eukadia stands for Unique Collective Awareness of DIA. DIA is a building block of concepts and objects that are called DA, DA, which is the Eukadian language system, and DA form together to create a statement, a statement of meaning called a DIA. And DIAs are then the building blocks of what's then called an idea. And then ideas are then the building blocks of models. And then models are the building block of a universal dream. So Eukadia is both a technical description of the structure of the dream and the name of the dream. So Eukadia is a complex model of a dream being gifted to everyone as a model to refine that dream so that we can consume the really awful dream of these mentally insane people in the world that have been running it badly for so long and effectively realign the dream so that a new dream is in place. That's the purpose of Eukadia. That's what Eukadia is. And that's why it's so big and has so many parts to it. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I think that will that help clarify that uh, question. Because I think the, the concern is that of, of going from one type of corporation or slave system into another uh, with regards to what people are seeing and waking up to and experiencing. Well, it's, look, it's, I understand this, and it's really easy. I mean, I'll give you an example. There's a, a fellow that's written a number of posts attacking, and I won't give his call sign because I'm not going to give him, you know, more credit, but here's an example. He's a guy that's written a, a number of, of, of postings. And what he's been doing is he's been going through the covenant and instead of presenting a whole section of text, he's been actually creating brand new paragraphs by taking segments of paragraphs, a bit like what, say, Fox News does with, interviews. They'll take the first two seconds, the next five seconds, and the last ten seconds to create a new speech of, a, of someone being interviewed that gives a wholly different meaning to what they actually said. And they do it over and over and over and over again, and they seem to get away with it. So they've got people that are doing that, where they're actually, actually well, there's no other way to say it. They're just deliberately lying. It's like going to the, the Bible and taking every fifth word and creating a brand new sentence and saying this is from the Bible. Well, it is technically from the Bible, but is it legitimate? No, it's not. It's, it's, it's a lie. That being aside, I understand that it is a human concern, a real concern, when there's been so many false movements, so much disinfo, that people come to this often with a, a natural cynicism. And I actually think that's a good thing. Because what I say to anyone that comes to you, Katie, for the first time is, don't believe what you read. Sounds like a funny thing to say, but please don't believe what you read. Test what you read. Challenge what you read. But above all, read. Because a lot of people that skim through life that for whatever reason have become almost allergic to reading and learning, which again is part of the imaging, the reason they've dumbed down the education system is they don't want people to read. They don't want people to learn. So they've actually promoted in the last 15 years a whole culture where I saw this the other day, I saw a bumper sticker, Stupid is Cool. I, 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 I believe it was an ad for a, a brand, a large commercial brand, and it was Stupid is Cool. That's how they're promoting it now. It's cool to be stupid. So don't believe what you read with Eukadia. Please don't. Challenge it 
And above all, if there's something wrong and you feel strongly about it, let us...